With COVID-19, many protections were put in place, including ones for evictions and rent payments. With these protections, many people have questions. And with me today is Jeffrey Hussey, Managing Attorney of Fair Housing Programs with Community Legal Services of Mid-Florida to answer some of these questions. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Has the federal government and the state of Florida enacted eviction protections for tenants facing evictions due to COVID-19? Yes, they have. There's two separate uh, things dealing with evictions. One, the federal government has issued what you probably heard of the CARES Act, which only applies to governmentally funded properties. But that has extended eviction moratoriums to July. And the state of Florida, through the Supreme Court and through our governor, has also issued executive orders and Supreme Court orders that has suspended eviction proceedings for a set period of time. And what are my rights as a tenant during the COVID-19 pandemic? Your rights essentially have not changed because landlord-tenant rights are a statutory right and your lease also contains what your rights are and what the obligations are between the landlord and the tenant. Now with the COVID-19 out there, there are some certain new obligations that have come both landlords and tenants to protect everybody involved in the property, but those are going to be such things as shutting down common areas, recreational areas and whatnot. So that is going to depend on what county you live in and what your property manager has decided is in the best interest of your units. And what happens if I cannot pay the rent after the protections expire? Well, you have to be prepared. If you cannot pay your rent, and as it stands right now, there are no added protections once the eviction moratoriums um, go by the wayside. So if you can't pay your rent, then you would be subject to eviction for non-payment of rent. So the best advice that we can give people is to don't wait until that time. Get with your landlord discuss if there's some type of option or agreement that the two of you could enter into to maybe set up a payment plan to pay your back rent. If you cannot pay your current rent because you're unemployed and your unemployment benefits are delayed through the, the website, explain all those things, open up a dialogue because the landlord would like to get some money rather than no money. So if you can come to some type of agreement, that would be your best option. If you have the money to pay your rent, you should obviously pay your rent. And am I still responsible for paying late fees on the rent? Yes, you are, unless there's a specific waiver from your landlord or if it's a federally backed uh, mortgage or property. And if my landlord agrees to give concessions, for example, to waive the late fees in my lease, could I request them in writing? It's always a very good idea to request anything or any changes to your lease in writing. Uh, verbal agreements are binding, however, obviously the best evidence is going to be if you have something in writing, but there is no requirement for your landlord to put something in writing. The best thing to do if your landlord will not put it in writing is to send a confirming email or letter to the landlord outlining what the new agreement is and what the changes are, so at least you have it documented and dated of when you entered into that agreement. What must a landlord do in order to evict a tenant legally? In the state of Florida, there's no such thing as a self-eviction. And that basically means that all landlords have to go through the court system to properly and legally evict you from your property. And that requires certain legal steps that they must go through all through the court system. And the first step would be to notify you that they have plans on evicting you and why they want to evict you. And that can be either from a non-payment of rent or for some type of lease violation. If you don't pay your lease, for instance, if it's a non-payment, then they have to serve you with an eviction complaint. And then you have certain timelines to respond to that complaint and assert any defenses. And if there are no defenses, then your landlord would have to get what's called a writ of possession issued by the court and then served on you by the sheriff's department. However, that is the one thing we talked about earlier is the Supreme Court has suspended those writ of possession. So therefore, right now, the final step cannot be accomplished by any landlords. And does the moratorium on eviction apply to individuals staying in hotels and motels during the COVID-19 pandemic? It possibly can. There are two types of tenants 
are two types of residents of hotel motels, and those would be a transient or non-transient. A transient tenant is one, for instance, someone that's coming to visit Disney World and they're staying in a hotel for a certain amount of time. They are not subject to the Florida landlord tenant laws with regards to getting them out. However, if someone is living in a motel as their permanent resident, then they would have to comply with the Florida landlord tenant laws. And there are certain requirements that you as a resident in one of those hotel motels would need to demonstrate to a court to show that in fact you are a non-transient resident of that hotel. And does the moratorium on evictions apply to mortgages during the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, if it's a federally backed mortgage, then yes, that would come under the CARES Act. If it is a private mortgage, then there is a moratorium on jury trials within uh, Governor DeSantis and the uh, Supreme Court's moratorium that they have issued. So yes and no. Uh, you still would be subject to a foreclosure once those moratoriums are lifted if it's a privately backed mortgage. If it is a government-backed mortgage, then they would have to comply with all the additional requirements under the CARES Act. What temporary restrictions have local courts enacted on evictions during COVID-19 and how much does an eviction cost? The local courts, it varies by court to court and Orange County, for instance, has put a, a moratorium if they're required to by Governor DeSantis, but the courts are determining what is essential and non-essential and non-essential proceedings are being delayed or done we have video conference in the local courts and only essential matters are being held live. But as of right now, there are no jury trials and the, the moratorium would apply to filing the evictions here in Orange County and actually having a judge hear an eviction case. Which landlords must comply with the Federal CARES Act? To come under the Federal CARES Act, landlords who have uh, Section 8 or any type of federally backed or housing would be typically Section 8, low-income housing tax credit properties, USDA properties. Uh, those are ones that fall under the, the CARES Act because they are federally backed. If you're unsure, then you need to either contact Community Legal Services Smith Florida, and we can find out for you, or you can go to certain websites on the internet and they'll tell you if your property is a governmentally backed project. Is Orange County able to mandate or limit rent raises or adjust rates during the COVID-19 pandemic? To private landlords, no. But if the landlord is participating in some type of government funding, there are certain limitations on what the rent limits are. But that is something that you, you'd be best to speak with the housing authority or to one of the uh, attorneys at Community Legal Services about. To what type of eviction does the CARES Act apply? CARES Act, once again, we talked about earlier, the governmentally funded projects. And the most notable one that most people are familiar with are uh, Section 8. People who hold Section 8 vouchers are covered under the CARES Act. And probably the next most prevalent one is properties that are funded through the low income tax credit. One question a lot of people have is, should I pay my rent uh, or portion of the rent if the landlord has not fixed repairs on my unit? Well, you're obviously required to pay your rent if you're able to. If there's something that is essential in your apartment or condo that needs to be repaired, there are certain steps that you must go through to put your landlord on notice or the property manager on notice of what's wrong before you can withhold rent. And there's a time frame. And that is a, a legal matter that if you don't do it correctly, then you are subject to eviction. So the best thing to do is to either you can go to Community Legal Services website at www.clmsf.org, or you can contact our helpline and the lawyers here can help guide you through the proper steps to withhold your rent so you're not potentially violating your lease and being subject to eviction. How do I report a landlord for sexual harassment, intimidation, or threatening behavior? There are several ways that you can report this type of conduct. And this is something that um, is protected by both federal and state law. Sexual harassment is a violation of the Federal Fair Housing Act. 
and that is something that the Department of Human and Urban Development has taken a strong interest in and are very concerned that during this COVID pandemic that sexual harassment may be on the rise if uh, tenants cannot pay their rent then unscrupulous landlords may ask for certain favors in exchange for rent which is a violation of federal law and state law. The best way to do it is you can contact HUD directly and they have online forms where you can file a complaint. You can also contact your local U.S. Attorney's Office. They'll be happy to show you how you can file a civil rights violation against your landlord or you can contact Community Legal Services and we can assist you in contacting and filing all the necessary documents. Will landlords or property management companies discriminate against new tenants for the fear rent will not be paid? We hope not, but you never, in, in these type of trying times, there could be certain biases that landlords may have against certain races of individuals they think may be carriers of COVID-19. That once again is a violation of the Fair Housing Act, but landlords should not and cannot discriminate because of fear of COVID-19 based on any type of protected class. And would you recommend talking with other renters in the building to organize our grievances? If it's a community-wide grievance within your, your facility, then you can certainly organize and a landlord cannot retaliate against you for organizing a tenant group. Sometimes numerous voices carry bigger weight than just an individual. And if a landlord sees this problem affecting more than just one person, they might put more priority in getting it fixed. Where can I get access to financial assistance to pay my mortgage, rent, and utilities? That is something that can change from day to day, week to week, month to month, uh, because there are just a limited amount of resources and there are so many people in need right now based on the large unemployment status, the problems of getting their unemployment checks and whatnot. The best starting point is to call the United Way, and that's a simple just dial 211. And they have certain organizations that they can put you in touch with that may have rental assistance. Orange County gets rental assistance money and partners with other local service organizations that might be able to assist you in rent and you can go to their website to also look and see if they may have postings of available rental assistance. And then there's also, uh, you can reach out to community legal services. Uh, we try to stay up to date with any type of rental assistance that may be out there that we can uh, send potential callers or clients to to try and get help during these trying times. Will shelters keep spots open or reserved for the increasing number of homeless due to COVID-19 or will they be able to expand their services? We hope that all the shelters will stay open and as of right now, they all are. However, with practicing social distancing and best practices, they're having to limit and space out individuals in the shelters. So there is a uh, high volume now with the shelters and they are trying to expand as, as fast as they can. They are not shutting down their shelters because of uh, the pandemic. They're actually trying to expand them, but there's you know, obviously a limited amount of space uh, available for them, but they're making every effort, all the shelters in Orange County to accommodate everyone that needs shelter. Thank you, Jeffrey, for helping us better understand these protections in these changing times. Thank you for having me. And once again, uh, this is a trying times and please reach out to Orange County, reach out to Community Legal Services, and we'll try to assist you as best we can. Thank you. And for more information, visit www.ocfl.net forward slash housing FAQs. Thank you for watching this special COVID-19 edition of Legal Connections. I'm Kimra Major Morris. Stay safe.